Praise the Lord. We thank God for the time out for this uh, three-day program called Clarity in Christ that uh, is going on, that God started himself. Uh, when God said we're going to have three days program, fasting and prayer, and the theme is Clarity in Christ, I had no clue. I had no clue what he was going to say. I'm surprised at the messages he's bringing out. I'm surprised? But I'm also not surprised because he is God. <laughs> uh, we are just learning. All of us are learning at his feet, at his feet. And I pray that God will teach us tonight again. This uh, short session, just uh, the, uh, the uh, carryover from what uh, he has spoken to us in the evening. Uh, we pray that God will speak to us again. He will open our eyes to his word. Where he needs to chastise us, may he chastise us. And where he needs to encourage us, may he encourage us. And help us to become perfect so that on that day we will be part of those who will rejoice with him forever and ever. Where there will be no more chastisement, there will be no more preaching, but where we will enjoy with our God forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight we are looking at, Jesus wants to speak to us about him that he called incomplete conversion the devil. He, com- he called incomplete conversion the devil. And we're taking our Bible verse from the book of John chapter 6 verse 70. John chapter 6 verse 70. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spoke, he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. This more, this afternoon, God spoke to us about incomplete conversion. Incomplete conversion. In, there is, as a result of incomplete touch, there is a time we are supposed to spend with God. It's like um, you're baking a cake. There are some cakes that should spend 45 minutes in the oven. There are some cakes that should spend one hour in the oven. There are some special cakes that spend longer time at a lower temperature, but at a longer time. Sometimes you are asked to make the temperature medium, then put it for a long time. I remember when God just provided us the hair fryer. Especially then when we were complaining, this oil is getting too much. We're taking too much oil. And uh, the oil is getting expensive. So God told me, go and get a hair fryer. And he provided for it. So we bought a hair fryer. So we can now use hair to fry. And um, I was... uh, I put the fish in the hair fryer. And actually, the fish should take... um, uh, I think the first round should go at 160 centigrade for it and about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Then you turn the fish again and go for another 10 minutes. Still at that stuff, 160 degrees centigrade. But I was in a hurry. So I rushed it to 200 or two whatever, the highest. And put, the uh, is it 10 minutes? The thing should just do fast, 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 fast and fry. I don't have time. And I want to save power. So let me, since I'm saving oil now, (laughs) let me also save power. So I put the fish there. By the time 10 minutes is done and I brought out the stuff, it looked funny. It wasn't well done. It was still smelling like fresh fish. That's why the fact that it was very hot. Because it was not about the rushing of the fish. It's about taking time. There is a process for air frying it. It had to spend a certain number of minutes in the air fryer. Hot. And also, before you put the uh, fish in the air fryer, you must have warmed the air fryer for three minutes so that when the fish enters, it enters into a condition conducive for 20 minutes, it is ready. Something like that. But I was in a hurry. I was a normal human being. <laughs> uh, we're always trying to uh, look for shortcuts. So I tried to shortcut it. It gave me useless fish. I had to go back again and try to amend it. At the end of the day, I got burnt fish. From hair frying, I burnt the fish. So I learned from then on 
to follow the manual. <laughs> so many of us, when we came into Christianity, we could not follow through the process. We were in a, some of us were in a hurry, and some of us, they hurried us. <laughs> Today I hear that you could go to school of uh, missions and disciples, and you spend three months, and you are a, you've collected a certificate. <laughs> Microwave Christianity. <laughs> Shortcut Christianity. All it leads to is incomplete conversions. And that's why we have all kinds of funny pastors and funny leaders and funny Christians because we have an incomplete process. We are now microwaving them. <laughs> have you eaten native fowl versus a Greek fowl? If you eat native fowl, don't try to put your teeth to the bone. It might be you that will lose your teeth because their bones are as strong as anything. But a Greek fowl, they are just a process. They are being manufactured. Two months, fowl is ready. Two months, three months. The native fowl is probably a year's old. <laughs> well matured. It will not give you too much uh, chicken flesh, but it's nutritious. But this uh, produced one, <laughs> a Greek fowl, they are manufactured. <laughs> Everything is uh, rhetoric. So, if you use your tongue to eat the bone too much, it will break. <laughs> Why? It, is, it didn't go through the process. So, we have so much of milk Christians who have incomplete conversions because they never went through the process. And that's why you see whole pastor's wife with all kinds of earrings and makeup and fake eyelashes and dirty clothes and uh, uh, the, the gown did not get up, did not get down. Why? It's incomplete confession. <laughs> you see a pastor who is chasing after uh, private jet, chasing after uh, Rolls Royce, chasing after uh, the goods of this world, things in this world, spending so much money so much money because it, it costs over a hundred million naira. Convert that to your to your uh, to your currency, wherever country you are. A hundred million naira to service an helicopter per month. Now let's come. If you now go to a private jet, that is in billions of naira to manage a private jet to carry one person and a few persons to go and minister. In the name of what? Name of Jesus? Which Jesus? The Jesus of the Bible, that Jesus, the one that have enough that could have gotten horses, that could have gotten uh, things to, for his ministry, but he reduced it to the barest minimum and kept everything in the post for the poor. Is that the same Jesus? Why? We have incomplete conversion. So the pastor wants to be like the normal celebrity. <laughs> he now goes about with cameras. <laughs> He's now wearing goosey shirts. <laughs> what is happening? Incomplete conversion. That's what is affecting many of us. But there was something that Jesus called incomplete conversion which makes it a serious matter. If incomplete conversion only means that ah, you don't know Jesus, you don't know Jesus, ah, and it might take you to hell. Why that is a serious matter? That is not as serious as when Jesus referred to anyone that has an incomplete conversion as a devil. Jesus is not saying anyone that has incomplete conversion is as of a devil. Who oh, will say, hey, why are you behaving like a devil? It do, that means you are not a devil. You are only behaving like one. <laughs> if you say a man is as strong as a rock, he is not a rock, oh. Is only strong like a rock. We're only comparing to rock. But if the man and the rock meet, the man will bow. <laughs> if you say a man is as sharp as a computer, oh, it means he's very sharp, but he cannot process what the computer is processing. <laughs> so, um, if Jesus said those that had incomplete conversion are like the devil, would have said, oh, he's like a devil. But there is one of Jesus' disciples who came close to Jesus. Who moved with Jesus but had incomplete conversion? And Jesus did not call him, ah, is one of you here not like the devil? 
Jesus did not say that. Jesus said, isn't one of you a devil? Ah. <laughs> it's not like he's a devil. He has incomplete conversion. He is a devil. Ah. Judas is carried moved with Jesus, but he never surrendered all to Jesus. Judas is carried did not leave all to follow Jesus. Because in that statement, if you look at that Bible verse that we have just read, John chapter 6 verse 70, if you go back to verse 69, you will see jo- uh, Peter telling Jesus, we have left all to follow you. Jesus corrected them in verse 70. You think you have all left all to follow me. No. Eleven of you have left all to follow me. And that is how to be a disciple. You have to leave all to follow Jesus. All. It's not about your convenience. It's not about your personality. It's not about your preference. It's not about what you like and what you don't like. It's not about your greatness. It's not about your name. It's not about your ministry. It's not about your anointing. You have to leave all. To follow Jesus. Peter thought he, ah, all of us disciples, we have left all. We have left all to follow you. We have left everything to follow you. Everything is what we have left to follow you. And Jesus have to correct him. Eh? <laughs> that have I not chosen you to have? And you think you have all left all to follow me? No, 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 no. There is one of you that is suffering from incomplete conversion. There is one of you that have not left all to follow me. There is one of you who is only following me for what he can get and not as a service to God. He is not following me because he has let go all his life for me. He he is only following me because he wants a life. He has only followed Jesus because he wants a life. Not because he's going to let go his life. He's going to drop that life. Others, I mean, what I mean, the others let go their life. They drop their life for Jesus. They had nothing again. They had no, 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 no ambitions. They had no goal. It's not about Jesus. What does Jesus want from me? I am satisfied. He wants me to be a doctor. Yes, I'm a doctor. He wants me to be a teacher. Okay, I'll be a teacher. He wants me to be a lawyer. Okay, I'll be a lawyer. He wants me to walk in the church. Okay, I'll walk in the church. It is all about him. They had no goal. You couldn't have invited them for a program and say, we are giving you an award. Which award? <laughs> Were they the one? No, they died. They let go their life. They couldn't have collected an award. Best pastor, best worker, best choir member, best minister, best uh, regional overseer. They couldn't have collected the award. Why? They died. <laughs> they let go all. They have nothing. They own nothing. If the cloth on their neck is Jesus that has it. If he says give it out, they give it out. If he says wear it, they wear it. It doesn't determine that they don't go to market to go and look for how do I look beautiful. They've gone past the stage of beautiful. They are no longer interested in self. They've let go all. Didn't you see the woman with the alabaster oil? A normal woman with the alabaster oil with such a wonderful oil. What she does with the oil is that she keeps it at home and begin to use it for herself because she wants to smell nice. What did she do as a disciple of Jesus? She poured it on Jesus. She doesn't care. It's not about the value. But the one who is after Jesus for what he likes says, Ah, why don't you give it to us? Let us sell and give to the poor. He knows he wants to use it. Ah, brethren, let's give to God the work of God, the work of God. Let's give to the work of God. And people start giving. Then the next thing I'm hearing pastors saying is, God has increased us. We were once small, now we are big. See us. God has enlarged us. Eh? Bros. <laughs> Didn't we know when you were doing begging, begging? 
Tell him members, bring money, bring money, bring money. Is it not the contribution of the money that builds it is? <laughs> now you are saying you are the greatest pastor. I am great. Ah, in my village, I'm the greatest. Oh, in South Africa. Look at us in South Africa. We have the biggest uh, this and that. Oh, look at us. In Uganda, our minister has enlarged. Ah, huh, sir? <laughs> you are <laughs> it is all about you. It's all about you. You have incomplete conversion. So that was the problem of Judas Iscariot. He wants a life. But the disciples of Jesus have no life. They don't have a life. Jesus is their life. They are dead. They are crucified in Christ. They have nothing they are looking for again. All they are after is God. God, 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 God. That is all they are after. Jesus. How do I please Jesus? How do I make Jesus happy? Jesus said, take care of the poor. The poor is what I'm looking for. It's all about the poor. Before I enjoy myself, I have to take care of the poor. Jesus said, if somebody comes to ask you for a coat, you have to give him your cloak also. So before I can uh, buy the seventh car and say God is the one that blessed me and I have the seventh car, and there is still somebody that is uh, not having accommodation. I will not, I won't even get to that number of cars. Because it's now becoming a lot. I don't need it. I can live without it so I can sacrifice it for that person. That's a true follower of Christ. That's a person that has let go his life for Christ. So, what, are, what is happening? John the Baptist, sorry, <laughs> God the plus. <laughs> Judas Iscariot came to Jesus. Judas Iscariot came to Jesus for what he can get. And Jesus intentionally left him there to betray him. And Jesus knew he was the devil. And when it was time to go for evangelism, Jesus sent Judas Iscariot among the twelve. He performed miracles. When it was time to send the 72, I want to believe the 12 will be part of the 72. Judas Iscariot was part of them. He performed miracles. Using the name of Jesus, Judas was a master. He used the name of Jesus because he was part of the 12. He was casting out demons. He was doing a lot of things. Yet he had incomplete conversion. He was going to betray Jesus. He was going to sell Jesus because of a land. He was going to sell Jesus for what for, for, for his ambition. Because he wants an ambition, he will sell Jesus. Because he had a goal, he will sell Jesus. And Jesus said, This guy that has incomplete conversion is only working with me for what he will benefit. He's only following Jesus for the benefit he will get. What is he? He is a devil. And this goes for every other person who has incomplete conversion, who are betraying Jesus for fashion. When it comes to fashion, you will betray Jesus. When it comes to your looking good, you will betray Jesus. When it comes to position, because you want a position in church, despite the fact you know they are asking you to tamper with figures, to do many funny, funny things, but because you are, ah, if I leave this thing now, nah, you will betray Jesus. Because of prosperity, you betray Jesus. Because of money, you betray Jesus. Because of anointing, you betray Jesus. The things that Jesus says you should not do, you are doing it. Because why? You just want that power by all means. I, I too must be powerful. I must be anointed. So you betray Jesus. You have a target for yourself. I want to be this. I want to be that. So you betray Jesus. Because you want to feel fine. You want to feel among the great people of this world. You betray Jesus. The teachings of Jesus, you let go and you betray it. You betray the Lord simply because you want life. What did God call you? What did Jesus call such a person? He called the person a devil. A devil. He did not say like a devil. He said, no, yourself and the devil, you are both the same level. No wonder Jesus said on the last day, they will perform miracles in his name and he will tell them, sorry, I don't know you. I used to wake up 3 a.m. I will blast in tongue for seven hours till the next morning. Sorry, 
I don't know you. Ha! I gave. I did this. I did that. Oh, I did not wear earrings because of, ah, because I can serve you. Even my girl was always touching the ground. Ah, I had only one trouser. I had only one shirt. Huh? In what other ways have you betrayed Jesus? In what other ways? That your mouth that can abuse people. Oh, you are not using earrings. Oh, thank God they are not using earrings. But what do you have in your house? Your table is the most expensive gold. Your chair is crazily expensive. All of them. The gold you do not wear in your ear. <laughs> it's in your hand, in your watch. <laughs> it's in your house. And you say you know Jesus? No. When you have complete compassion, you will suddenly discover that these things are dirty. Honestly. Your eyes will now finally open. You will start seeing men walking like trees. Your eyes will finally open to the clarity. And you will just see. <laughs> Why am I wasting resources when there is life to be touched? Why am I wasting money to show for presentation and packaging? When there are lives, there are poor people around me that I must help. Hey, you know, God will help us. At least I have four children and paying their school fees. Is that not enough? No, it's not enough. It's not enough. You must obey Jesus 100%. That's when you are not betraying him. What incomplete conversion leads to is betrayal. Such a person will betray Jesus. And such a person is a devil. <laughs> I didn't say so. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. The money is not supposed to collect from sinners. He collected it in the name of Jesus. He was collecting money from sinners in the name of Jesus. He told them, I will give you Jesus. Give me money. Let me talk to our ministers, our pastors. You collect money from sinners. You say you will give them Jesus. Oh, give unto God. Just give. Just give. We have a building project. It's an allergy. Don't worry. Let him give to God. Let him just give to God. Ah, he's a Yahoo boy. Oh, let him give to God. <laughs> let him just give to God. When he gets to God, it will be clean. Let him just give to God. You carry baskets in the service. Put offering basket in front of the church. This, you know many of your members are not even born again, so you are collecting money from sinners. And after they, uh, they've given you the money, you now come to the altar and say, in the name of Jesus, you are blessed. Eh? So you are selling Jesus to them. <laughs> you are collecting money to give them Jesus. Oh, sacrificial giving. Everybody bring your money anywhere you are, whether you are born again or not. Just give us the money. Give us the money. We are building project. It's building project. We need to build for God. Just give us the money. Give us the money. What are you doing? You are the same thing as Judas Iscariot. You are selling Jesus. You are collecting money from people to give them Jesus. So you will kiss Jesus. In your prayer, please say, Father, all my members, bless them. They have given unto you. Bless them. What are you doing? You are kissing Jesus. You are using your access. And because you have access now, you are collecting money. <laughs> Many of us are not thinking deep about what we are doing. And that's why God is speaking to us for clarity. Present is time to stop selling Jesus. You are selling Jesus. You are a devil. You are betraying him. Because Jesus never sent you to beg money on his behalf. Jesus didn't send you to gain the world. It wasn't after you gaining the world. All that you gain here, he expects you to sow it to heaven. Jesus said, provide for yourself purses in heaven. Heaven is the most important thing. That's your investment. I'm not saying you're not at investment here. Oh, you will have investment led by Jesus. 
He's the one that will tell you, invest this money here, invest that money here, build this house there, build this house there, build this, get this, get that. He will be the one to direct you, not for your own gain, but for his kingdom. It's for his kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. It's about his will. It's about his will. And Jesus is the packaged will of God. Like God told us yesterday. Jesus is the packaged will of God. The lifestyle of Jesus is the packaged will of God. That's why the Bible says, It's not all that call me Lord, Lord. Judas is called, called him Lord, called him Master, called him Rabbi, called him Father, called him everything, yet he betrayed him. Why? He had incomplete conversion. So Jesus is saying, Anyone with incomplete conversion, anyone that will betray Jesus because of anything in this world, is a devil. And usually, when a devil is promoted, he becomes a devilish pastor. Teaching the members devilish message. Preparing all of them for hell. If not that God has given me warning of reason not to tamper with his words, not to reduce the intensity of his word, by now I will shut up. I won't talk again. <laughs> but... I've gotten a warning from many places now. I should not tamper. So I should say the word as it is. I will say it as he has said it. As the Bible said it, I present it. <laughs> oh, you are free to uh, blacklist me. Um, block me. Um, get out of the group and see you are not doing it again. Ah, no, no, no. I'm not supporting this. This is rubbish. Oh, no, no, no. Jesus has said it. On the last day, many will come and say, we called you Lord. We did this. He will deny them. He will deny them. Why? They betrayed him. They betrayed him. They betrayed him. Sister, are you betraying Jesus? Are you the express image of Jesus? I saw a woman today. She's a bit elderly. I saw her with lipstick. And I was looking at her, I was confused. And I'm still going to, I'm still going to contact her. Because God has said, any message you give me, I must give you. So she might not greet me again, but I will contact her. <laughs> but the only spirit I should ask her, if Jesus was on earth, will he use lipstick? That simple Jesus. That Jesus that said, his meat is to do the will of God. If he was on earth, will, you, will he use lipstick? And you call yourself a Christian. You are a betrayer. You are a betrayer. You want to use the name of Jesus to get good things on earth. Yet you are not ready to sacrifice for him. You are not ready to sacrifice for him. Not at all. You are not ready to sacrifice for him. All you are looking for is to use his name. To use his name. That's all you are interested in. To feel good. You want to use his name. To feel good. Then you will satisfy your, your desire. Because there is nowhere I find it in the scriptures where Jesus said you should go and be using what you are using. You are trying to satisfy yourself. You are doing it to satisfy yourself, not to satisfy Jesus. That was what Judas Iscariot did. Judas Iscariot came to Jesus for the purpose of satisfying himself. That's why he was stealing money from Jesus. That was why he betrayed Jesus. That's why he sold Jesus and promised the sinners, I will give you Jesus. You will give me money. Don't worry. I will give you Jesus. So, are you betraying Jesus? As a pastor, are you betraying Jesus? As a minister, are you betraying Jesus? As a singer, are you betraying Jesus? Are you betraying him? Do you think if Jesus was to be a choir member, those useless songs you are singing, you think Jesus will sing it? Ha! Huh. That's your incomplete conversion that makes you convert uh, praise worship to show of shame. That incomplete conversion that makes you sing useless songs as choir ministrations, songs that have nothing to do with salvation, songs that have nothing to do with eternity, songs that have nothing to do with Jesus. That will make you convert raining beats to a church song. That incomplete conversion is only making you a devil before Jesus. The incomplete conversion that makes us take 
things of this world and bring it to the church and just try to stamp the name of Jesus on it, that incomplete conversion will cause us problems. Shall we ask ourselves a very important question now? Am I still having incomplete conversion? It is no more a joke. It's no more, ah, incomplete conversion will not give me answers to prayers. No, 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 no. Incomplete conversion will make you a devil. And no matter how great and popular and mighty you end up becoming, a devil is a devil. Judas Iscariot is very popular. Oh, he did wonders. He performed miracles in the name of Jesus. He probably taught the message of God, but thank God Jesus killed him early. He died early. So he wouldn't have poisoned the people of God with all kinds of messages. Messages of oh, prosperity is a poison. A very serious poison that has taken the eyes of many people away from God. Because prosperity makes you look at the world. Jesus makes you look at Jesus. Why well, yeah, Jesus will meet your needs. So I don't need to teach you about prosperity. I need to teach you about Jesus. Jesus will set to your needs. It's a subtle God. It's a mammon. So it's been taught by those that have incomplete compassion. They are yet to let go this world. So they teach prosperity. They teach all kinds of theories. They go to the Old Testament and teach theories from there that are against the teachings of Jesus. You can teach the Old Testament and be teaching Jesus. But because, and why we discourage is because many of us don't even know Jesus yet. So what are you teaching? First know Jesus. When you know Jesus very well, <laughs> when you go to the Old Testament, you won't get confused. You won't get it mixed up. But some have intentionally made themselves Old Testament preachers preachers permanently so that they can wiggle their way around things that are antichrist messages that are antichrist who is John, who is, uh, who is uh, Judas Iscariot he's an antichrist he worked with Christ but was an antichrist all he was there for was to sell Jesus was to use Jesus for his own benefit he had incomplete conversion and Jesus said he's a devil Everyone with incomplete compassion is a devil. Because they are leading, if, if they ever come in contact with other people, it is to hell they will lead them. God is uh, preparing a message. Hopefully, it will be released very soon. I don't know when, but it's a message. It's called Deny Yourself. Deny Yourself. It's very key. Every disciple of Jesus, Jesus said, if you do not deny yourself, you can't be my disciple. So, understanding that verse alone, that I need to deny myself, means that there are some things I can get because I'm popular, because I, I have this, I have access. I have access. Even we, as small as we are, we have access. I know if I come to the group now and say, praise the Lord, brother, we just want to announce that the, the phone that we are using is having problem. If God touch your heart, please get us a phone. I am very sure if I ever make, and God will help me in the name of Jesus, such an announcement will never come for me in Jesus' name. I will not backslide. But if, if I use my access to people to make that announcement, oh, I will get more than 10 phones. People will be pushed. Ah, but I feel me. Ah, but I feel me. Ah, ah, we must get messages. Oh, oh, ah, oh, but I feel me. Take this hundred thousand for a phone. Ah, no, ah, me, I bought you a phone. Ah, I'm sending a phone from US. No, it's from UK. No, it's from Dubai. I'm sending my own phone. Then I'll be going to, I'll be getting DHL every day. Correct? I'll now come to your time and say, President, our God is wonderful. Do you know I, I asked us for one phone and God, God in his infinite mercies, God provided me with 17 phones. Is that, what is that teaching the members? <laughs> That's a subtle way of sowing the seeds of begging, begging into our members, into the listener. Of not trusting God. Or not waiting on God. If I teach you to wait on God, why don't I also wait on God for all my needs? And just for your information, I don't need a phone. 
The last time I needed a phone, when my phone got spoiled, and I was managing phones to send messages, I did not tell anybody. God went to touch a sister, and God held her down and said, send so so amount of money to Buddha Femi. She called me, and she was saying, Buddha Femi, I know you will not agree. I know you will not agree, but God said I should tell you that he has sent me to give you money. <laughs> And I told her, uh, okay, uh, let me pray. I said, no, it's not a matter of praying about it. God told me. I said, okay, wait. Then God just told me. I said, yeah, I wanted to buy you a new phone. So I'm sending this person. So she will get you money now to give you a temporary phone. I will now send you another person that will get you money for the main phone. So I said, oh, okay, thank you, Lord. So I got a temporary phone. Not knowing that my wife's phone is going to get spoiled. So once I go phone got spoiled, I transferred the temporary phone to and God provided me my, the one I'm using. And that's the one I've been using for years. And I'm still using now. And it's working. So I don't need the phone. <laughs> I will, you will never know when I need anything because I don't need your help. You are not my provider. Nobody can provide for me. Nobody is strong enough to provide for me. Jesus is my provider. I will never betray Jesus because of money. I will never betray Jesus because we needed to buy food. Or when they to uh, pay students school fees. I will never betray Jesus by coming to meet human beings and be begging. Rather, I will wait on Jesus. If he does not provide it for me, I am satisfied. I will be using cellular tape to tie the phone and manage it and I will be using it. And it will be working. If it will not work again, my God is not so dumb that he doesn't know that I needed it for the ministry. He will provide one for me. When God will provide one for me, he will provide it from outside Nigeria. From one African country. Somebody just sent from one African country. That is what God can do. <laughs> and we never discuss it with anybody. So, we, as teachers, must ensure that we go back to God and get complete conversion. Because if we don't have complete conversion, we will mirror our incomplete conversion in our messages and give it to other people. And as we mirror that incomplete conversion to other people, We'll be, we'll, we'll be increasing the number of devils. And we'll be thinking we are doing the work of God. We are going to heaven. Why else? It's dangerous. Our incomplete conversion is, is, is happening in the life of, or is affecting the life of our members negatively. And I'm not saying it's bad to contact brethren. Join me in prayers. Especially where you feel the devil is making you afraid. Hey, there's this problem. You're going to die. Ha, ah, ah. ha. Poverty will kill you. Ah, this need will not be met. Oh, call brethren. Brethren, please join me in prayers. I'm trusting God for a need. Please join me. My children's school fees has not been paid. Please join me in prayers. That God will help us. So I can boost my faith. There's nothing bad in that. But using your access to be stealing money from people in the name of Jesus. Oh, we now have an anointed and kerchief. I heard that there is one pastor in Nigeria that has anointed the swimming pool. You pay 50000 to enter. <laughs> if you want to dip your leg in low, you pay 10000 or so to dip your finger, maybe 5000 or something like that. Jesus. <laughs> that is a Judas Iscariot. <laughs> oh, I'm having special people now who will be paying money for me, who I will call my partners. No, Jesus did not have partners God raised people, certain women that God raised to help him. He did not sell Jesus and say, the anointing will be used for you. Bring the money and connection with me. You are, you are tapping into the grace of Jesus. That is selling Jesus. That is trade by butter. Give me money, I give you Jesus. My access to Jesus will be used for you. You just give me money. That is betrayal. It's a matter of incomplete conversion. If you are fully converted, you will stop it. So brethren, are you having incomplete conversion? Can we take it to God in prayers now? It's a, it's a serious matter now because Jesus called Judas Iscariot, who has incomplete conversion, a devil. Don't be a devil in the church. Don't be a congregation of devils. Don't raise congregation of devils, a group of devils, members of devils. Don't do that. Come back to Jesus. Have a complete touch. Go back to the Bible. Go back to Jesus. Study his word. Follow it 100%. Follow Jesus. Bumper to bumper. Follow Jesus. You and Jesus alone. Making Jesus. Let people abuse you. 
that is what happened to disciples. They will abuse you. They will, pers- they will persecute you. They will speak against you. They will dislike you. They will hate you. They will call you name. They will curse you. They will stone you. Even they will kill you. I was telling my mother, my biological mother, I was telling her. I told her that, well, I might, maybe one day they will stone me. <laughs> that was what they did to disciples. They killed them. Maybe one day they will kill me. But in the truth, we will not, we will not stop saying it. As the Bible says it, I say it. Hate me, thank God. It is expected. <laughs> so brethren, let's take this matter to God in prayers now. Please God, I don't want incomplete conversion. Ah! In any aspect of my life where I have incomplete conversion, please come and help me. Come and help me. Come, help me. I want to have complete conversion. Have mercy on me. Open my eyes. Let me see my errors. Where I thought I was complete, I thought, oh, I am okay. Ah, and I'm not okay. Hey, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? My soul is more important than this world. Father, help me to have a complete conversion. I need a complete conversion. That is the prayer we are praying tonight. I don't want to be a devil. A person with an incomplete conversion is a devil. To Jesus, that the devil and the devil and that person, they are all the same thing. Demons and that person, they are the same thing. Imagine people with incomplete conversion binding Satan. Saying they are, they are commanding Satan. Hey! And Satan deceives some of us too. He will leave. You will feel, yes, so that you, you will be in your ignorance of incomplete conversion. Ha! It's a matter we are all taking to God in prayers. Father, where I have incomplete conversion, help me. I don't want to be a devil. Help me, Lord. Help me. Shall we take this matter to God in prayers? God bless you.